Just do it. Just do it indeed. <laughs> Guido, you've introduced the video there. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm very uh, good there. I, I just come from the exercises. You make, make a little bit sports yes. for, for the muscles, yes. And, Shreddy. Uh, the, the weather is very nice, and uh, yes. And uh, perhaps uh, the weather in, in Manchester is also nice. I well, don't think I'll, so. But I'll tell you what, in England, it is pretty damn nice. The, the weather like this week has been very springy, very sunshiny. Okay. okay. Same, same for you in Germany, eh? But look, uh, yes, yes, yes. Everybody, <laughs> welcome here to United People's TV. This is, of course, Guido Schaefer. Everybody's favorite, second favorite German, unfortunately, Guido, behind Ralph <laughs> Radnick, of course. But um, we're here. We're going to speak about uh, Ralph Ragnick. We're going to be speaking about um, Eric. T Obviously, we have to talk about Eric Ten Hag, right? We have to talk about Maurizio Pochettino. And just a little, I suppose, chat about Manchester United in general. So, uh, Guido, you, you've you been watching Manchester United keenly, uh, as yes. far as I know, um, watching what Ralph Agnew is doing. And it's been, it's been a pretty frustrating last couple of weeks, I think, for Ralph. You know, we've obviously gone out in the Champions League. Um, have you managed to speak to Ralph or hear anything from Ralph yes, about how yes. he's feeling? Yes, we had some short messages. Yes, we are... Also in the instant uh, uh, contact, and uh, yes, it, it was it was very hard for Manchester United and also for Ralph uh, the the match against Atletico Madrid. It, for for me, it, it wasn't it wasn't football. What only one team wants to play football, and that was Manchester United. And after Atletico scored one goal, they they made nothing for the match. Uh, they on, only damaged the match, and I don't like this football. And I hope uh, their way will end against uh, Manchester City. Um, yes, uh, Manchester United hasn't the, the, the power in this match to score. They try, they try, they combinate. And uh, yes, but they have not Cristiano Ronaldo in, in the age of 22. Uh, he's 37. And mm. in these matches, uh, we see that he's not in, in, in his best performance. It's, it's normal. He's 37. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned him there, Cristiano Ronaldo. So much has been said about uh, his relationship with Ralph Rannick, or just his relationship with the club, that he might be slightly frustrated at what's going on. Again, have, have you have you spoken to Ralph? Uh, uh, said anything on, on that relationship? Because as far as I'm concerned, it seems, oh, no. <laughs> it seems okay. I I think so. Yes, uh, uh, Ralph said he's 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 totally fit for a man who's 37, and uh, we all have great respect for Cristiano Ronaldo for his. Very, very great career. And I think it's also brave from Ronaldo to say, I will continue my career in a, in a club like Manchester United in the Premier League. Uh, when I was uh, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I, I, play, I finished my career, I continue my career in, in Paris or in the USA, but not in the Premier League. It's so hard. You have to be so fit. And I think for a man with 37, he, he made it's okay his performance, but Manchester United... Uh, in my opinion, needs another uh, forward player and uh, uh, a younger player, uh, perhaps a, a tall player, which is able to make the difference in such great games uh, like Atletico Madrid. Well, I, I think you're completely right there. And uh, <laughs> why can't we talk about uh, Christopher and Cuckoo, right? You know, he's 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 been doing great things at, at Leipzig since he joined. <laughs> yes. Um, what what is what is the position of of Leipzig on Christopher? You know, is Obviously, Leipzig's business model has always been about bringing young players in between the ages of 20 to 24. They've yes. established themselves in Europe and then being sold on for, a, for a, a profit. And then the cycle goes again. Do you think that he's likely to leave uh, Leipzig this summer? And do you think yes. that Manchester United could sign him? Uh, they have. They have to. They have to. Is there, if there's a possibility to, to buy uh, Christoph and Kungu. Manchester United uh, has to do it. This, this is a very, very good player, very skillful, and it's uh, for Premier League. It's perfect for him. He's he's so talented, and uh, I think he's a little bit like Sadio Mane, uh, so so fast and with both uh, foot uh, uh, left and the right. He's he's perfect, and also in in his brain, in his character, he's a very, very good man. He's uh, has a, he's one wife and one children and only one car. Not three wives, four children on five cars. And therefore, I think, yes, if Manchester United is able to buy him, buy him. Yes. Yes. I, Only I remember, 60 million bucks. Yeah, I remember you saying that uh, when we were linked with Amadou Haidara, you said, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether he's, he's yes. ready for the Premier League or he not. He isn't. 
No, Haidara is for me. He's also a good guy, but he's he's not um, in this high world class level uh, like like uh, Christopher and Kungu. But I think there are many many uh, big clubs. They are searching for such a player, and Kungu plays his third season in Leipzig, and he's he's outstanding. Uh, he's outstanding in every match, and perhaps Liverpool will buy or, or Manchester City. Paris Saint-Germain, but uh, I think Manchester United sounds very good. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with you. I completely agree <laughs> with you there. But uh, before uh, Manchester United can really talk about new signings, because obviously we need a striker, we need a central midfielder, we've currently got no manager. We, at this moment in time, are still going through the process. of yes. Ralph Randick is obviously there on an interim basis, but Eric Ten Hag and Maurizio Pochettino are the two names that are atop yes. the list. Now, um, uh, Eric Ten Hag's been interviewed this week. But what I, what I would like to ask you, um, Guido, is about this consultancy role for Ralph Ragnick. Because still, there is a real lack of clarity on what that role will be. Yes. Where, where, where Ralph Ragnick will be based. Will, will he be staying in Manchester? Yes. Will, he be, will he be leaving and just working on a remote basis? Is there anything you know about what this role is supposed to look like at this moment in time? I think, first of all, I think a dream from, from Ralph Rangnick was and is to be continue as a, as a, as a coach in Manchester United. But uh, I think this is now, it's, it's not possible and it's not the fault from Ralph Rangnick. When you see in, in Jurgen Klopp or, or Pep Guardiola, they, they had the time and the money to uh, create their own squad to buy players for their system or for their systems. Ralf Rangnick has no, the money is there, but he has, he has no possibility to, to change things, to develop things and also to improve things. And uh, the, the squad was there. And then they said to have Ralf, work with this squad. But they are in, in, the, in the past, they made many, many falls. I think the squad is not homogeneous, homogene, homogene. I don't know the, the German, the English homogene. Homogeneous. It's homogeneous, yes. And um, in, indeed, it's not... Manchester City is a better squad. Liverpool, better. Also Chelsea. And afterwards, OK, they can fight with Arsenal and Tottenham for the fourth place. But uh, it's, it's not a problem of the, of the coach, I think. And it's, I, I read something about from, from Paul Scholes. He said, we need a coach which works for, for our club. Ralf Rangnick works 24-7 for the club. And I think it's also a question from respect when when Scouts speak in these words about Ralph Rangnick. It's it's unbelievable. I think in German we say, "Go home and wash your hair, Paul." Well, with um, with Ralph Rangnick, is he is he still happy in Manchester? You talk about that lack of respect there. I've, I've never really questioned uh, his work ethic. I've always said he's got integrity and honesty. Uh, but you know, crashing out of the Champions League that. Was it expected? Was it a surprise? I don't think it was too much of a surprise. It was a bit frustrating. But I personally, as a United fan, I see Ralph Rangnick as so important for the for, for Manchester United as a football club, yes. modernising, modernising yes. properly. And yes. that's that's why this role for me is so important. So do you do you have any? As I said, do you have any insight in terms of what that? Because I don't think anybody knows. I don't even think Manchester United know what this role is for Ralph Ragnick. Consultant yes. is what it's being labelled as. But what does it mean? Does it mean that Ragnick's going to stay in Manchester? Does it mean that he, he might move back to Germany and then remotely work? How do you see it working out? As I said, have you, have you managed to speak to Ralph about that at all? First of all, he loves he loved this uh, this challenge. He loves Manchester United. It was It's the biggest challenge in, in his life as a, as a, as a coach. And also the challenge is now to, to modernize the club, the structure. It, I think it's so many things in the, in the leading, the bosses. It's not so, so high class uh, um, bosses are there to, to, uh, to work and to, to have a philosophy. Where's the philosophy? Which football plays Manchester United in the last 10 years? Which football? And, uh, and with Ralph, I think he, he wants to make sure that that's also is his work in, in, in Germany. A, a club needs a, a philosophy which for, for which football he stands, Manchester United, which players you need for this system, which coaches and which staff. And therefore, I think it's, it's very, very important that Ralph uh, will stay there in Manchester United as a consultant. And I think he, he can travel two weeks in Germany, two weeks in Manchester United. And uh, I hope the bosses from Manchester United... Um, 
uh, in, in Germany who said it's for me obviously they don't believe now in Ralph's ideas and in, in his strength and they they need to believe in Ralph Ramnick and uh, he should be continue uh, he should work uh, for for Manchester United in the future it's very very important for the club in my opinion All right but I completely agree with you uh, an interesting uh, question I'd like to ask you looking at If the two managerial options for United are Eric Ten Hag and Maurizio Pochettino, which of those do you think Ralph Rannick, you talk about the philosophy and, and everything behind it, which of those do you think that uh, Ralph Rannick would rather bring in Ten Hag or Ralph Rannick would rather bring in and work with Pochettino? Which one of those two men do you think suits Ralph Rannick more? I think there are two very high-class coaches, but uh, Ten Hag is very close To, to Ralph's uh, ideas and uh, I think uh, this would be a, a very good decision for, for the future for Manchester United to, to work with, uh, with Ten Hag. But he needs also help. He needs the help that Ralph Rangnick in this moment doesn't have. Uh, he's so, he's so, he's stand, he's so uh, in, the, in, the, in the media as a man who can, uh, who can nothing. No. I think in the Premier League, he has an average point from 1.9 and nearly two points a match. This is okay for this squad. And uh, yes, against Atletico Madrid, this was a little bit pity, but also is, is what, what is this for, for a club, for a football? What is this for a coach with no respect? I, no, I don't uh, hate uh, Atletico, but it's near to hate this club. It's awful football and the, the coach shows no respect to the, for the fans or for Ralf Rangnick and yes but Ten Hag yes this is the right way with Ralf Rangnick Ten Hag and other good uh, men uh, who work together for, for this club and the structure is, is not is not world class the, 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 the club the club is world class but the structure now since 10 years it isn't world class and I think they all think about, about the time with Sir Alex Ferguson a one man show Fergie make, make yeah. every, made everything. The, the, the times has changed and it's, it's impossible to work with a one-man show. I mean, you're right. You're completely right there. And it kind of leads into the next point I wanted to speak to you about. And that's Paul Mitchell. Uh, Paul Mitchell currently is the sporting director over at Monaco. Uh, but he was brought to Leipzig by Ralph Radnick. Yes. And they obviously yes. had a working relationship together had quite a lot of success together in, the, in terms of the players that Paul Mitchell came yes. in, Christopher, Christopher Nkunku, Nkunku sorry, uh, Amadou Haidara. Uh, he did bring in quite a few players whilst they worked together. You know, what can you explain to us about the relationship between Paul Mitchell and Ralph Ragnick? Was it something that I suppose was behind the scenes and no one really knew what was going on? Or did Ralph always sort of speak pretty highly about Paul and the work yes, that he yes. was doing? Yes, yes. They have a great respect to each other and... Uh... Um, Ralph bring him to, to Leipzig and uh, Paul is, is a very, very nice guy. I spoke many times with him and he's a great expert and, uh, and a hard worker. And I think uh, this relationship will be functioning with, uh, with Ralph Rangnick and uh, Paul in Manchester United. But I don't know the, the bosses, if they uh, have the same opinion like you and like me and like Ralph and like Paul Mitchell. Well, they don't. I think you're right there in the fact that if... if uh... Manchester United at this point don't really believe in Ralph Radnick's ideas, then they probably never will. And that's always yes. been that's always been a significant um, hurdle, I think, for Manchester United modernizing properly. But yes, in a yes. dream in a dream world, I'm sitting here looking at it. I'm saying Ralph Radnick working with Paul Mitchell and Eric Ten Hag. <laughs> yes. That's that's a, that's a dream scenario, right? You've got a man who's yes. really really focused purely on the recruitment, a man who is focused on the actual running the entire operation in Ralph Rannick, and then you can just let the coach just yes, coach yes. the football. But my friend, I don't know if uh, the one, one, I don't know if this is Cristiano. Is, the, is he uh, part of the problem or part of the solution? Uh, I love Cristiano. We all love him. He made the difference against Tottenham. He scored three fantastic goals. But it's, it's so difficult to, to, to have a, a superstar in, in the squad. Also, his impact in the cabin. I think Many players love him and respect him. And some players, perhaps, they say, oh, I have to run for him. I have to work for him. This is not so easy to handle with, this, uh, with, the, with the world star in, 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 in the squad. And sometimes I think that the bosses from Manchester United, they, 
they view on the uh, on the merchandising to to sell uh, the jerseys and to earn money but to to reach the champions league and to win titles you cannot play with with two forwards uh, together 75 years old it's under it's uh, impossible yeah. it's completely un unsustainable uh, that i do 100 percent agree with but if if i was to ask you a final question here it's been so ralph came into manchester united around about november november december time and now we're like three four months on and he's got a couple of months left what do you honestly think is going to if say say me and you were to have a conversation in six months' time, what do you think is the most likely scenario? Are we still going to be seeing Ralph Radnick in this consultant's role? Do, do you think he would have left the club? Because a lot of United fans are scared that Ralph Radnick might just go, ah, screw this, and just walk away because he's not getting the sort of uh, respect and power that he feels yes. he needs to. Yeah. Yes. What, yes do you so think, what, what do you think will happen? If, if he feels respect and power... Then he he will definitely stay at Manchester United. He love I, I told you he's, he's he's fallen in love with this club. It's, uh, it's so it's a, so it's the biggest club in the world. Not in uh, in, in the last uh, few uh, years in trophies, but it sounds like the best and the greatest club in the world. And he he will he will continue his work. And he he loves challenges and he loves success. And I think in the constellation with him. And also Paul and Tanak, it would be nice. And uh, you need, uh, you cannot change things in, in one transfer period. You need two, two or three or four transfer periods to prepare, to have a squad which is able to play your football. Watch Jürgen Klopp in Dortmund also. He needs three years. Also in, in Liverpool, he needs three years to have succeed, to succeed. And uh, Guardiola needs also uh, uh, some time. And... Uh, you have Manchester United, they have to realize that it, it takes now time and it, it, it must be now the, the, the most important decisions must be now uh, fall. You know what I mean? Oh, my English. I lost my English, my translation. Yeah, okay. But now th this situation is, is so important now. They have to say yes, yes to, uh, to a professional management. They have to say yes to Ralph Rannick, also to Ten Hag and per perhaps uh, for Paul Mitchell. I mean, I hope so. I, you're right. This this summer, I mean, look, we've made some big mistakes as a football yes. club in terms of the managers we've brought in, the players we've signed, and it's 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 all contributed to this eight nine year period after Sir Alex Ferguson retired. Where yes. yeah, Manchester United is still one of the biggest clubs in the world, but in terms of footballing ability as a team, we're 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 a mid table team now. That's that's yes. how we play. That needs to change. I hope that does change with Ralph Rangnick staying on. And look. But judging from what you're saying, that he's obviously extremely happy in Manchester. That's important. You can't underestimate how important that is. But United need to give him the power, man. Get, yes. get, allow him to make some decisions. You, the only reason you speak to a consultant is to be consulted. Yes. You're supposed you're supposed to listen to that consultant, right? Yes. 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 At this moment in time, I don't think they're doing that that much. But fingers crossed that can change. Eh? I mean, I, I basically I suppose we're hoping at this point, and that's stupid. It shouldn't be hope. We should yes. know by now. But, I think so. But it is what it is. Hey, look, Guido, I always love <laughs> it. I, I always enjoy chatting with you. I need to come to Germany. I might be coming to Germany at some point in in July. I might go yes. to Munich. So you need to tell me the best places to go. And then you have to, to speak a little bit uh, German. Uh, my, my English is better than your German, I think. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah, I, I think that's extremely correct. <laughs> but but we, are all missing, we are all missing Ralph here in Leipzig. When he when he's living here, I, I met him uh, in the restaurant, and uh, I know where where his apartment is. And now his son is living in, in his in his penthouse, and uh, he, he he's twenty four seven in in Manchester, sometimes in Barbados to make a little bit swimming. Yeah, <laughs> I, I read, I read in the West Indies to watch the cricket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I hope the uh, the best. Cross your finger for for Manchester United. It's and Ralph Rangnick was a good decision for the club, but now they have to give him power and respect, and also Scholes and Co. What I I don't believe. I don't understand that the former legendary players, though they speak so so with with. I think hateful about a respected man like Ralph Rangnick. It's for me. It's it's not. It's not okay. There's it's all a thing. With, respect. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with criticism, but uh, 
yeah, sometimes I can tend to agree with you. Sometimes they have they say correct things. Sometimes yes, they yes. they decide who they want to be angry with. Yes. Which that's it is what it is. But Guido, thank you very mm. much for your time today. And go and enjoy the you're sunshine. Welcome. I'm sure yes. you're going to enjoy some lovely steins this weekend. Yes, yes. And uh, excuse my my English. I will prepare me. I will I will develop my. And improve my English. <laughs> well, I think I need to improve my German much quicker than you need to improve your English. Okay. But thank you very much, Guido. I'll speak to Good you luck. soon. Cheers, Bye -bye. buddy.